the Butcher cover. It's one of the most sought after Beatles collectibles with some copies fetching over $100,000. At the time of its release, it was seen as highly controversial, so much so that it was recalled just days before it was set to be released. But what many people don't know is that it was going to be just one part of a larger series of photos. On today's program, we're gonna explore the history of the infamous Beatles Butcher cover. While on the Beatles' 1964 Australian tour, their manager Brian Epstein was in Melbourne for a newspaper interview. Taking pictures for the article was photographer Robert Whittaker, and he was struck by how Brian was dressed. With his expensive watch and gold bracelet, Robert saw him as a Roman emperor, and the resulting portrait evokes this with his face framed by peacock feathers. Brian was so impressed with the photo that he invited Robert to come to London and work for his management company NEMS. Robert accepted the offer and spent the next two years touring with the Beatles, photographing them both on stage and off. He documented earth-shattering events like their Shea Stadium concert, as well as quiet moments of reflection when the band had their guard down. These photos went on to become invaluable glimpses of who the Beatles were during their most prolific period. And while Robert enjoyed taking portraits of each Beatle on their own, unfortunately, magazines and newspapers were only interested in publishing photos of all four Beatles. In other words, there wasn't a lot of money in single Beatle portraits. This frustrated Robert because while he was competent at taking publicity photos, the subject itself was boring and he yearned to do something more creative with the Beatles and he got his chance on the 25th of March, 1966. Walking into the studio, the Beatles saw the most unusual collection of props for the shoot. Sausages, raw meat, fake eyeballs and teeth, butcher smocks for each beetle, a bird cage, and a box full of baby doll parts. Inspired by such surrealists as Dolly, Hans Belmer, and Mirit Oppenheim, Robert planned to use these props as part of a series of vignettes that came to him in a dream. After spending so much time with the Beatles, Robert saw them as just normal people, but he also witnessed how their fans treated them like gods, and he wanted to explore this relationship. His concept wasn't just the butcher photo, but a series of images that would form a triptych, which is basically a trifold or three panel form of Christian art. He called this piece the Sonambulant Adventure, which roughly translates to having an adventure while sleepwalking. He envisioned this as a gatefold album with the front cover showing the image of a woman with her back to the camera. The Beatles are standing in front of her holding sausage links. These represent an umbilical cord, and this was to show that the Beatles were born just like everybody else. In later years, Robert said that the image was going to be placed inside the photo of a pregnant woman. Opening up the gatefold is where the butcher shot was to be. However, the photo would have been much smaller, roughly two and a quarter inches in size. And the final image would be touched up to resemble a religious icon with jeweled halos added to each beetle and a gold background. With the baby doll parts, Robert wanted to show that fame could tear the band apart. The meat represented their fans and the fake eyeballs and teeth are symbolic of false idols. It's unclear what would have occupied the rest of the gatefold, but my guess would be the track listing and credits. The back cover would feature a photo of George hammering nails into John's head with the final image featuring a wood transparency over John's face. This was to represent that the Beatles are real. They're not made up or fake. An inverted sky sea would be added to the background, although I don't know what this would have represented. Now you might be thinking, why would the Beatles agree to be photographed with raw meat? It's bizarre to say the least, but you have to understand by this time, the Beatles were used to photographers and their strange requests. To them, this was just part of the job. On top of that, they had spent so much time with Robert that they truly trusted him. He got their sense of humor and they worked well together. But that's not to say they totally understood what he was trying to do. In fact, George was the most critical, at least in retrospect. He thought the butcher idea was disgusting and dumb, but put up with it anyway since it was a group effort and he didn't want to be the odd man out. Ringo had no idea what was going on, but went with it anyway in typical Ringo fashion. John and Paul were the most enthusiastic about the shoot since they were eager to move away from the band's mop-top clean-cut image. 
1966 was turning into summer, Capitol in the US was eager for a new Beatles album. They were used to releasing new records from the group every few months, and since Revolver wouldn't be ready until August, they took matters into their own hands. Capitol's original contract with the band allowed them to alter Beatles records without their consent, so Capitol went ahead and pieced together a new record by compiling songs they removed from the US versions of Rubber Soul and Help, adding the double A-side single Day Tripper and We Can Work It Out, and finally including three songs from the upcoming album Revolver. All they needed now was a cover. According to Beatle historian Bruce Spicer, Capitol reached out to Brian for new images of the band, and he sent along photos that were recently taken in April of 66. This session was rather last minute and incidentally also shot by Robert Whittaker in Brian's office, utilizing a steamer trunk as the main prop since it was already there. Capitol's design team went through several revisions before sending over a mock-up for Brian's approval. And it's believed that at this time, the Beatles saw the upcoming cover art and were disappointed. They had recently looked at proofs from the Butcher session and the trunk cover photo seemed rather dull in comparison, not to mention it was more of the same clean cut image they wanted to move away from. It was mostly John's idea to replace the trunk image with one of the butcher photos. Despite Brian's distaste for the image, he relented and told Capitol to redesign the cover using the butcher photo. Once the president of Capitol Records, Alan Livingston, caught wind of what they were about to release, he called up Brian asking him to reconsider. Brian refused with either him or Paul adding that it was the band's statement on the Vietnam War. Even though he had his reservations, Alan went ahead and gave the order to print the butcher sleeves anyway. The reason being is that the Beatles were incredibly important to Capitol, and Alan wasn't about to put a strain on their relationship over an image. He was willing to take the chance that the whole thing would be a non-issue. Not to mention Capitol's parent company, EMI, was due to renegotiate their contract with the Beatles, and Alan didn't want the band looking at other labels. Capital produced roughly 750,000 copies of the Butcher cover with 10 to 20% of these in stereo and the rest in mono. Around 60,000 advanced copies were sent to distribution centers around the US with many ending up in the hands of sales reps, critics, and radio stations. Most retailers were appalled at the imagery and refused to stock the record. Negative feedback was so strong that Capital ordered a buyback of all copies, sending out a letter explaining how it was pop art satire that had been misinterpreted. A few stores did offer the record for sale before the official release date of June 15th, but only for a day or two before they got the recall notice. Then came the daunting task of manually separating the good vinyl from the rejected covers. Initially, the butcher jackets were ordered to be destroyed, and many were, but with three quarters of a million record slicks to get rid of, it was going to cost capital a lot. So to save on money, they pasted over the butcher cover with the trunk photo they had originally designed, but this time we're using the text overlay sheet. These were then packed and shipped with newly pressed regular covers and both hit the store shelves on June 20th. Though Yesterday and Today became a number one selling record, it was the only Beatles album to lose money, at least when it was initially released. Capital spent somewhere between $200,000 and $250,000 to replace all the covers. In the end, all their effort to avoid a controversy seems like a moot point compared to what happened just a few weeks later when Datebook magazine reprinted an interview with John Lennon emphasizing his comment on how the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. It didn't take long for a few eagle-eyed fans to notice Ringo's turtleneck peeking underneath the white space. Curiosity got the better of them, and with some careful peeling, the butcher image was revealed. In the ensuing years, it became popular to hunt down copies of Yesterday and Today and peel them, creating a bit of a rite of passage for Beatles fans. Since Capitol Records never offered an explanation to the general public, the cult-like status of this album only grew, with many fans left to speculate as to its meaning. The most popular belief was that it was the Beatles' statement on how Capitol Records butchered their albums for so many years, but as we now know, this was not the case. What's not clear to me is why Robert never assembled these images into his concept. It's known that Brian Epstein didn't care for the butcher photo, so perhaps he said something to Robert. Or maybe the Beatles didn't like the overall idea. Or maybe it just came down to cost, as gatefold sleeves are more expensive. It could also be that he never got around to it before the butcher image was used in a UK advertisement for Paperback Writer. Perhaps at that point he just gave up on the whole idea. Unfortunately, we'll never really get to know the truth as Robert passed away in 2011.
So that's the story of the Beatles Butcher cover. To some, it's just overpriced cardboard, but to others, it's an enduring collectible, indicative of a time when raw meat and the Beatles could shock the US. The fact that it made it as far into production as it did just shows you the power of the Fab Four. I say, if you have a copy of Yesterday and Today, it's worth checking for Ringo's turtleneck. You never know. For the longest time, I thought I had a regular copy until I looked a little closer and I realized that my $20 record is worth probably closer to $500. Well, that'll do it for today. Be sure to leave me a comment and let me know if you have a butcher cover. I'm curious to know. Until then, thank you so much for watching. I'm your Vinyl Geek and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey everybody, thanks again for checking out the history of the Butcher cover. Now, if you wanna see more great Beatles content, I put a link right there, as well as another video that I know you guys are gonna enjoy.